A strange night of mystery on the great estate of Collinwood. For Barnabas Collins, searching the long deserted East Wing, has made an astonishing and puzzling discovery. A room, brilliantly furnished, but a room which he cannot enter, stopped by some invisible force. And a room in which he saw Julia and Elizabeth obviously living different lives. They could not hear him when he called to them. When the door closed and he managed to open it again, the room was empty, the furnishings gone. I've never been in the East Wing, Barnabas. I know that, but you were there. You were both dressed differently, although you looked much the same. Barnabas, we were at the carriage house. I know, but you were there too. Oh, it's insane, but I am not mad. It, it wasn't a hallucination. It wasn't a vision. You were both there. How could that be? I don't know. But you must believe me. I, I believe you, I, I guess. I was going along the corridor, looking in every room for Megan's coffin. The rooms were empty. See, the East Wing hasn't been used in years. Then I, I went in through one door that, that led to a brilliantly furnished room. The lights were all on. I tried to, to get in, but some strange force kept me from entering. Then I saw a portrait of Quentin and David. I could read the inscription clearly. It said, your loving husband, Quentin. Was it, was it modern? Yes. And then I saw, and I saw Elizabeth come in. She went right to a closet and opened it. There were many, many dresses there. And she, she started to take them out and then you came in and ordered her to stop. You said that, that she wasn't to come in that room. It wasn't hers. But Elizabeth said that she was dead and you insisted that she wasn't, that she'd come back. Barnabas, Barnabas, that's frightening. Yes. Because there's no explanation possible. None. And yet I have the feeling that you and Elizabeth and Quentin, perhaps all of us, are leading a different life in that room. Barnabas, you must take me there now. I always forget where I put things. Here it is, Julia. Won't it look charming on the couch? Oh, yes, 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 of course it will. I must call the upholsterer in the morning. Mm. Oh, dear, I suppose I should write some notes about Carolyn and Jed. And I must order the announcements tomorrow. There are some people I must tell personally. Elizabeth, I'll, I'll say goodnight. I never did find that book, Julia. Oh, I'm sorry, Barnabas. It's in my room. I'll, I'll get it. I'll come and get it. Good night, Bond. Good night, Elizabeth. Don't you think we, we should tell her? She's gone through enough for one day. Now come, Judith. I cannot believe it. If I hadn't run into Reverend Brand in the village, I wouldn't. He tells me that Carolyn is married to that so -called... I couldn't stop him. Well, why didn't you call me? I would have flown home. Roger, we have to give Jeb a chance. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's had his chance. Really, Elizabeth, you're always giving in to Carolyn. You've let her have everything she wants. When I left here, I thought things had returned to normal. You seemed your old self again. The children seemed different. I thought everything was going to be all right. And I get here and this has to happen. You'll simply have to accept it, Roger, as I have. It's true, we haven't known him long or well, and he's not the sort of person I would have picked for a son-in-law. But then I married someone the family didn't approve of. And with disastrous results. That was unnecessary, Roger. But surely Barnabas tried to stop it. Didn't know. 
But then what? Something must be done. What? Well, marriages can be annulled. Roger. Carolyn is in love with Jeb. Leave them alone. I don't understand how you can let it go at that. I certainly won't. Here it is. I don't hear anything. I didn't before I came in the first time. Holmes, open the door. Empty. Just as it was when I first came here. No, Barnum, don't, don't go in there. I have, a, I have a strange premonition. I suppose it's silly. But let's go in. Portrait of Quentin was here on a table. You and Elizabeth came in through that arch. A window. How many lives? lived in this room how many moments of of excitement anger pleasure in the past yes but what frightens me is that you weren't dressed as if you were at any other time what happened here took place now well you what is it I'm, I'm trying to remember what I don't know that it has anything at all to do with this. Well, anything might help. Well, I was at I was at Elliot Stokes' house one night oh, last spring. We were having a brandy after dinner. He started talking about time. Yes. He was complaining that we all simply accept it. Well, we don't have much choice, I thought. But Elliot had been reading a theory. It sounded insane to me. A theory of, of parallel time. Parallel time? Yes. We live on this universe in 1970, right? We accept the fact that, that our time is, is the only time that we can, we can truly know. Suppose time is... It's like a road, and, and, and parallel to it, there's, a, there's another road. On one, we live the lives we know, but on the other road, our lives are different because we're in a different time band, and, and we've made different choices. For example, in that other band of time, I could have made a different choice when I was at college. Instead of being a doctor, I could have married and, and had children. Don't actually think through some, through some warp in the time band that you have actually seen us living other lives. I don't know. There's got to be a, a, a more rational explanation. Must there? Someone, someone's out there. It says it was close. This is where you are. No. Your coffin is in this wing. I know that. What do you want from me? Come with us, Megan. No. Come. Megan. Megan. Megan, have you ever been in this room before? No. Are you positive? Why is she questioning me? Have you ever heard any voices from this room? Someone else comes here. No. Oh, tell me who it is. No, Megan, we were, we were just, we perhaps just imagined what we heard. You must know how I feel when I look at you, knowing that I'm responsible. For what? For your life, as you have it now. 
I had forgotten that other life. Everything I used to do, the shop, the long evening. Megan, Megan, perhaps we can help you. Perhaps we can take you away from the life that you have now. I've been giving Barnabas injections. She can give them to you, too. If they work, then then you'll be free of the curse and you can live your life as you did before. But you must cooperate with us, Megan. I'll come every evening and give you an injection. You must take them at regular intervals. I'll go and get my equipment and begin now. No. Megan. It's your only chance. You'll be found out, Megan. I don't want to be any different than I am. Megan. Oh, you don't know. You just don't know. I won't let you change me. I, I won't. I, oh, there is nothing for me to go back to. Nothing. Philip is dead. Let me be. I cannot. But every time I think of you, I'm, I must blame myself. My weakness has made you think this way. You can find nothing but horror and death as you are, Megan. Oh, Megan, live again. She's gone. Lewis, where is Barnabas? Surely he told you. Mr. Collins, Barnabas don't confide in me. Well, that's certainly understandable. Tell him I must see him tonight. It's about Carolyn. Why, what's happened to Carolyn? Oh, you don't know? Well, you're one of the few in the world who hasn't heard. Well, delight in your ignorance, Loomis. Delight in your ignorance. Are you... You sure don't improve in time, Mr. Collins. You, you sure don't. Who's there? Mrs. Todd, did I frighten you? What are you doing out here at this time of night? Come, we'll walk together. Reverend Brand told me the very sad news about your husband. I, I was sorry to hear it. Mrs. Todd, are you feeling all right? I'm so cold. Oh, we'll take my coat. No. I'll be better in a moment. You've had so many shocks recently. Yeah. I had hoped that everything would be all right by now. Oh, Mrs. Todd, if, if I've upset you, I'm sorry. It was thoughtless of me to bring this up. I know how, how, how strange this evening has been for you, but you must not feel personally about Megan Todd. How can I feel any other way? Roger. Barnabas. Barnabas, I was looking for you. And Julia, too, but I can't quite remember. Roger, you... Are you all right? Yes. Why shouldn't I be? But the light is so bright. Elizabeth, I... I must find Elizabeth. I... I just ran into Megan Todd. 
terrible about her husband? Roger. Yes? Oh, Roger, let, let me give you something for, you, for your headache. No, certainly not. I can take off tonight's up. Good night. Barnabas, we've got to help him. How can we, Julia? He is under her spell. One by one, we'll watch others come under her spell. We must stop her, Julia. We must. But she'll never let us give her the injections. You know what we must do, Julia. You can't do it. I must. We must find her coffin during the day. We must stop her the only way she can be stopped. With a stake and a hammer. Me? W w why do you pick on me, Barnabas? I'm not picking on you. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, I'm, I'm not going up to some old room in, in the East Wing and open up some coffin and, and put a stake on a heart. Barnabas, I don't even know Megan Todd. Willie, it isn't a pleasant task to, for anyone, but it must be done. Oh. Julia! I'll, I'll go with you, Willie. Julia hasn't got the strength. Well, well, I'm not so strong either, Barnabas. I mean, a job is a job, but, but you're asking me to endanger my life and my future wife's happiness. Well, suppose something happened to me in that room, huh? I mean, I mean suppose it did. Willie, you're not listening to me. It's because you're going to talk me into it, that's why. Oh, Barnabas, please don't. Not this time. Just don't try, please. You'll be in no danger, Willie. It will be day. Now, Julia and I will plan it carefully. We'll find out from Sky Rumson tomorrow exactly where the coffin is. Why don't you ask him to do it? Because he's under her spell. I cannot trust him. And I do trust you, Willie. Yeah, yeah, you do. I know you do. That's why I'm always getting into trouble. Willie, Willie, you'll be in more trouble if Megan Todd roams the woods freely. All right, I'll do it. But I'm not going to sleep tonight. And then tomorrow, Roxanne's going to want to know why I'm so nervous. I mean, I wish I could tell her these things. I mean, she's going to begin thinking I'm weird or something. Willie. Willie, I'll, I'll come for you when everything's ready. All right. Sky will we'll get in touch with you in the morning. And it will be all be over by dusk. Yes, it will. No, I'll go now. Uh, I'll go with you. No. Megan will be. No. I don't have to worry about Megan. I've got my proper protection. That room. That room. How can I have seen Elizabeth and Julia there? Who were they talking about? Who is dead? How is such a thing possible? What is the secret of that room? What? When was I last in the East Wing, Julia? Oh, it must have been over six months ago. <laughs> and does Miss, Mrs. Johnson ever go there, or any of the servants? Well, I know it's cleaned every spring, and occasional repairs are made. Why do you ask? Oh, I... I thought I saw a light in, in the window tonight. Really? Oh, it was my imagination, I'm sure. Well, maybe we should check it. Oh, no. No, I don't think it was. It was reflection. There, there was lightning. I just worried that the children might have seen it and thought the place was haunted. <laughs> Fortunately, there aren't any legends about that part of the house. You sure it was a reflection? Yes. Yes, I am. Tell me about that part of the house. You'll have to ask Roger. He knows much more about the history than I do. Why are you suddenly so interested? Oh, it's a fascinating house, Elizabeth. Today, I, I realized how actually little I know about it. Elizabeth.
Julia. Can't you hear me? Julia! What are you doing? It should not be hanging here now. She did not even want you in this room. How dare you come here now? I will not take it down. He is coming. He will not want it up. Then he will tell us. Until then, it will hang. Let anyone in this house see it. It's been covered long enough. Angelique. No. No. No one must see it. Let everyone see it. Let them remember her. How could anyone forget her? Elizabeth, don't close it. Elizabeth! Can't you hear me? Why can't I get in that room? Let me in! Let me in!